Hey everybody, uh, this is Josh. I'm gonna be doing a video for you, uh, kind of explaining my upgrade process. Um, currently, this is my CNC for newbies new car 1000. Um, it's been doing really well for me for about two years now, uh, but I'm looking to go a little faster, uh, be able to cut things a little bit better. And the biggest change is doing a automatic tool changer. So its current setup, just to give you a little background, is a 1.5 kilowatt, 110 volt water-cooled spindle. It's been doing really well. Um, I'm actually going to be giving this to my dad because he has a machine as well, but just using a router. So he gets this once I get the upgrade all finished. Um, but overall, it's been a fantastic machine. I actually just ran this board uh, not too long ago. All right, it's all a mess, but it's been kind of collecting dust for a little bit while I get this upgrade going. Um, but yeah, so that's what I have now. Uh, I just have all the components mounted to the wall. Current controller is the Open Builds Black Box. Um, it's actually been doing really well. I know it's like a little small controller, but um, I have not had any issues with it. I actually love it. So, um, but the upgrade is going to be full automatic tool changing. Um, it's doing hybrid closed loop stepper motors and just wanted to give you kind of a quick rundown on all the components what i'm upgrading and i'm going to try to keep these videos somewhat short but a little bit informative as i go through this process so uh, first off i'll show you the spindle um, this is it here it is a 2.2 kilowatt 220 volt automatic tool changer with a uh, er16 collets um, iso 20 for the tool holders I don't know why it's not focusing, but there it goes. Um, so I have a whole bunch of these that I ordered. The spindle is massive. Um, it weighs about 18 pounds compared to the seven pounds that my current spindle weighs. So because of that, I did talk to the guys over at New Carve and the CNC for newbies, and I picked up their high Z um, heavy duty spindle mount. So this here and huge linear rails on it. Um, and you can see the size difference. This is the, the new ones compared to what's on my current one here. And they're significantly smaller. So, yeah, so this should be a lot stronger. And then I designed this tramming plate, which I'm hoping not to use. Um, obviously, you want to try to do as much of the tramming as you can on the gantry by doing the adjustments down here. Uh, Chris Croft and I have done a lot of talking back and forth on how to get that accomplished correctly. And I will be doing a video on that once I get to that stage. But yeah, so I have the spindle mount here. It's 80 millimeter spindle. Um, I did purchase another mount and then I'm taking the one from here. I'm gonna take this one off and then mount it here. So I'll have two of them. I think it'll just make it a lot more rigid, um, a lot less flex. So, so yeah, that's the holder there. Um, because of how heavy it is, I am upgrading all the motors and everything. So these are NEMA 23 size stepper motors, but um, they're three Newton meter on the torque. So at four and a half, or almost four and a half amps. Um, they are closed loop motors uh, with closed loop drivers, but uh, my controller, I'm going with the Acorn you can see here um, it's a hybrid closed loop so I'm not gonna have all the true closed loop stuff but in the future if I decide to upgrade the controller to something that does handle full closed loop I'll have that all done already on the motors and motor controllers so these are the motor controllers seal 57 T's from stepper online um, and then this is kind of what I'm looking at for my initial box layout this is a 20 inch by 24 inch by I believe eight inch deep box. Um, you can see the box over here, just showed up. Um, so it's gonna go in there. But yeah, this is kind of what I'm looking at for the layout. Uh, it may get adjusted here as I start building it, but I had to do a little bit of research on how to actually wire these correctly. So basically what I'm thinking of is everything's gonna be around 220 volt and then I have multiple uh, power uh, supplies that will convert the voltage down to 24 volt, 5 volt, and then all the stepper motors are going to be running on 48 volt. So I found this, it's a Meanwell 1000 watt uh, 48 volt. So 
Uh, it has a capacity of 20.8 amps with my four controllers at 4.2 amps each. It gives me 16, so I get four amps a little of overhead, and that's if all of them are pulling max power, which I don't anticipate happening. But I like having extra room, extra overhead, so I have that. This will not fit inside the box. It's way too big. I'll probably build a separate enclosure just for this. And then I will have another enclosure for all my solenoid valves to control all the automatic tool changing and to control my uh, misting for the coolant. So these are the four valves that I'm gonna use for uh, the tool changer. I'll have another video kind of going over all that more in depth once I get to that point. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have a whole bunch of sensors on this thing to make sure that everything is working correctly uh, during the tool change process. Mainly it's gonna be watching air pressure in multiple different places on the air line between the compressor and the tool changer. Um, again, I'll do another video on all of that. This is just kind of a high level overview. Um, then we have VFD. This will all get automatically controlled by the controller. And we have relays here. This will control the different solenoid valves. And I may have a hookup to my dust collection. We'll see about that. Um, yeah, I have that. And then this board here is mainly to expand out all my inputs. So. By default, the Acorn can only accept, I believe it's like four, four or six inputs, uh, something like that, and that's not enough, so this expands it out to add an additional 16 inputs, um, which I'm not gonna need 16, but again, I like having, being overkill with stuff. It's kind of how I do things. Um, and then network router, uh, the cool part about the way the Acorn system works is it's all done through Ethernet. So I'll have my computer run into here. This will go out, talk to the Acorn controller, and then another one will talk to this board here so everything can all talk together. Um, these here, we have noise filters. So I need to do a little more research on this. I kind of just impulse, actually to be honest, I accidentally bought two of them, but I may uh, use both. So what I'm thinking is I'll have one of them uh, filtering all the power for the VFD. And then the other one will filter all the power for the rest of the electronics. So I'm going to do some research to see if that's uh, acceptable. If you guys have any thoughts on that, leave them in the comments for me. That'd be great. Um, and then a contactor. This is, that, is what's going to turn everything on and off for me um, using switch here. So this will get mounted in the door on the box. I'll turn the switch. And it has a green light, so once it's on, the light will light up green, and it should power everything up for me. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a quick rundown on it all. Um, I will update you guys with more videos as I complete the build. And yeah, love to hear your comments. Oh, a couple other little random things. I also purchased the wireless pendant for the Acorn controller, which I'm very excited about because with my open build system, I purchased their like little handhold. It's a wired box uh, pendant type controller thing and it was actually horrible. So um, I kept having programs stop running with it and it just, yeah, it wasn't great. Um, and then I also have probe set up because Acorn can handle all the probing and everything. So excited for that. And then um, a Z tool touch off system so that'll get mounted to it as well so a couple other sensors i have float level sensors these will be used in my coolant um they only came in a tool pa two pack so i have a backup but i'll just need needing one so that way if my coolant level starts going low i can have it pause the program until it's reloaded or refilled um and then i bought a bunch of heavy duty uh switches so I originally was thinking about putting these on each tool holder so that way I can have um, have the, the program know if there's a tool in place or to confirm if a tool had been actually loaded or unloaded successfully. But after a little more research and seeing some other people's projects, uh, somebody else actually was using just an induction probe mounted underneath the spindle. So when it picked up a tool, it would know it saw the metal there, so it knew that there was a tool there. Um, I may go that route, um, but we'll see. Uh, actually, 
Now that I think of it, my spindle may have all that built into it. I'm gonna go confirm that. But uh, in the description, I will go ahead and put a link to the spindle that I bought um, and then everything else. And yeah, love to hear your comments, questions. Um, I'll start making playlists and stuff as well for all of it. So that way all of this will be in one, one nice area. Um, but yeah, talk to you guys soon. Subscribe if you want more info.